Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. All right, let's have a look at the 2019 question on functions on the Leave Insert Ordinary Level course. Question seven, a Komogi goalkeeper on a level pitch hit a ball straight up into the air. The path that the ball travelled can be modelled by the function f of t equals minus 4t squared plus 16t plus 1. Where t is the time in seconds from when the ball is hit and f of t was the height of the ball in metres above the pitch. The ball landed on the ground without being hit again. At what height was the ball when it was hit by the goalkeeper? OK, so um, this can come up a bit in functions or calculus type question. Um, and it's always from the second that the event happened. So from the second that, in this case, the ball was hit or the ball was kicked or you dropped something or, or a type of question like that. But in all of them, the little piece of theory that you need to know is the time is zero when something is first struck. OK, so T is zero when it was hit. So therefore, into your function, if you sub in time being zero, you get um, the height of the ball at time zero. So anything by zero is zero and that's zero so that you're going to get it's one. So uh, the height of the ball in meters. So one meter was the height of that ball um, from the second it was hit. OK, um, I then come across to here for the next part. Sorry, I was just trying to fit everything on one page. Um, so complete the table below to show the height of the ball at various intervals during the first five seconds of the of the flight. OK, so what you can do is you can sub in zero for this function in for T because you can see these are your time T's here along here. So one by one, you can sub in your time T's. Or you can use the table, the function option on your calculator. OK, so you're going into it, 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 depending on whether I use Casio calculator, it's either mode setup or menu setup. And you're going for number three, the table option. OK, so into that you're putting minus four. It, it's now flashing f of x. So minus four. We don't have t in our calculator. We have red x and that sits behind the close bracket. Uh, button. OK, so now I have minus four and a big x squared. So just hit the x squared button and you'll see squared hops up there. Plus 16 red x plus one and hit equals to log that into the um, the memory of the calculator. Uh, you're going to start at zero. So that's what start means. What value do you want to start with? So let's put in zero. We want to end at four. So we'll end at four and we're going up in steps of 0.5. OK, so you can see then I get 0, 1. OK, and that's what I'd expect because when I subbed in 0, I got 1. At 0 0.5, I'm getting 8. At 1, I'm getting 13. 16. So I'm just hitting down, down, down there in that center button in your calculator to get all the values. I'm ignoring that first column because that's literally just row one, row two, row three. So I'm looking at my X values that they match these and my F of X values are the answers. So it's these. So there's that 16, 17, 16, 13, 8 and 1. OK, so not surprising, it's um, it's a quadratic. OK, there's my x squareds, t squareds in this case, my x and my numbers. So it's either going to be a smiley face or a sad face because my x squared term or my t squared term is negative. We're going to get a sad face. So I'm not surprised then when I see it going up to 17 and then coming back down again. So can you see it going up to 17 and coming back down again? Um, and 
so that's mathematically the representation about that. But if you think about this ball going up in an, in an air, a ball has to go up, but a ball has to come back down again. OK, so on the grid below, draw the graph to show the height of the ball when it was in the air. So all of your points are X comma Y. So zero comma one is my first point. Um, so zero comma one. So I'm there. 0 0.5 on my X axis or my T axis, eight on my height axis. So 0 0.5, eight. 113, 1.516. I did my 13 wrong. I knew that looked a bit strange. Do you see what I'm looking at? I can see my curve going up here and then I had this point a little bit off, but that's because I plotted the point at 111 instead of 113. So keep an eye on your points as you're plotting them because it, it can be relatively easy to spot when you have a point that's out of sync or out of kilter. And then we're coming back down again for two and a half. Three is 13 again. At three and a half is down to eight. And four is back down to one. OK, and as smooth as you can, you join these together in a nice curve. It's it's not a regimental structured line. It's a curve. OK, and let's label him. That's F of T. OK, every curve needs a label. OK, so that is the trajectory of the ball. It goes up. It turns and it comes down. And for anyone who has calculus done that point there, where it turns is what's called the turning point. Okay, C, use your graph to estimate, okay? And the reason I put C over here in the corner rather than a new page was because we're reading off the graph. So, and it says show your work on the graph above. And that's super important that you always show your, what I call construction points on your graph. Show the length of time the ball was in the air from the time it was hit until it landed on the ground. OK. So show the length of time the ball was in the air from once it was on the ground. OK, right. I, I just thought it was zero to four there for a second, but it's a little bit more than that because it's not on the ground there because it's one meters above it. OK. So I want to continue on down a bit until it reaches the ground. OK, so from here to here is the length of time the ball was in the air until it landed on the ground. OK, so a couple of ways of writing it. You can go from 0 to 4.25 seconds if you want, or 0 is less than T is less than 4.25 if you want to write it as math language. So the ball is in the ground when T is between 0 and 4.25, OK, or whatever value you get for here on your graph. Um, right, show your, use your graph to estimate the length of time the ball was 10 metres or more above the ground, OK? So now I'm at a height of 10 meters. So I approach my function from the height side. OK, so a height of 10 runs across here. OK, so let's mark that construction line, if I can call it that, on my graph. So that is a height of 10. OK, uh, show the length of time the ball was 10 meters or more. OK, so it's from this time here, whatever time that is, to this time here. Okay, or the equivalent on your graph. So what is that though? That's 0 0.5, 0 0.75, 0 0.75 seconds up to 3.25 seconds. 
Okay, or again, 0 0.75 is less than t is less than 3.25 if you want to write it in maths language. But you know what? Nothing wrong writing it like that. Write it whichever way makes sense. But you can see that at all times, my graph speaks the answer as well. OK, so that answer appears here in maths numerical figures and graphically as well. And the same with this one, even though there wasn't too much I could mark on the, the graph. Um, but it's done. If you are interested in technology or engineering, but are not doing higher level maths, why not consider our level seven in electronic and computer engineering? This is a three year program that looks at the design and development of embedded electronic systems. These are the medical devices that keeps us healthy, the consumer devices that keeps us entertained, or the controlled systems that keeps us safe on the road. You can then progress onto the level eight in electronics and self-driving technologies and from there to the masters. Check out the link below for more information.